So we're doing a quick look at the 1985 Tandy catalog. And so right off the bat is the Tandy 2000. So the Tandy 2000 is the headline attraction in this catalog. Coming in at anywhere from $27.50 all the way up to $42.50 in $1985, which would be over ten grand in today's money for a model with a hard disk. And that's before adding in the monitor. A monochrome monitor would set you back to $249, but considering that one of its party pieces is its high resolution eight color graphics you probably want the color monitor, which is only an additional $799. Tandy 2000 was advanced for its time, but failed in the marketplace due to a lack of 100% compatibility with IBM. Shot for a compatibility with DOS rather than one-to-one -one hardware compatibility with IBM. And that caused issues with some software. Here's some of their software that they were selling along with it. Mostly business items, spreadsheets, Word, things like that. Got accounting software, graphics, a couple of games, just like text adventure type of things. Uh, limited library available in here. Next up is their Model 16, their top of the line business computer before they rolled out to 2000 and that's the pattern as catalog they show their systems in sort of an order of newest to oldest and then pages of accessories and software so this is billed as their most widely used unix based microcomputer in 1985 from tandy radio shack and believe it or not the unix they were using was microsoft xenix labeled as TRS Xenix, but Xenix was Microsoft's version of Unix that they sold back then. This computer had two processors, a Z80, which was standard in that line up until this one, and then a 6 MHz 6800 CPU, like the early Macintoshes. So they were selling this system as essentially the ser not just a single user system, but the server for a multi-workstation system, so they sold terminals to go along with it. This is essentially a shell of a Model 4, which you'll see, or a Model 3, but with just as a dumb terminal. And this is a rebadge Wise 50, sold as the Tandy DT100. The Model 12, which was previous iteration of that. No dual processors, just a Z80 system, uh, which ran their own operating system called TRS-DOS, so you might have been able to get co um, CPM for it, I don't know. Coming at 2700 for a system with two floppies, you can get a primary hard disk for the pri same price as the whole computer. A graphics options for 250 which you know still monochrome but they did have graphics capability various business software items for it a lot of this was a long-lived line you don't see a lot of it out in the wild because they were not really marketed toward hobbyists or home users this was set up specifically for the business market so the model 2 12 and 16 share a software library. Here you have the Model 4 and the portable Model 4 I And mean, look at the size of that. These were uh, the next generation of the Model 3 computer. So it went Model 1 Model 3, Model 4 were all compatible. 
this was who is this for for busy managers, professionals, and home computer users. And this is a little bit more in affordable range. You can get one without a serial port and only one floppy drive for just over a grand in 1985 money. So it's coming down in price. You got various software leading off with your business programs and home office type of things, programming languages, COBOL, Fortran, Pascal. So it does have the availability of CPM, also their own in-house operating system, some agricultural software. Here's a stripped down version with no floppy drives at all. You'd have to use a cassette tape to load anything for $7.99. So this was sort of your bare bones option in that line. You've got some games for it. Nothing too elaborate. A music synthesizer. Remember that all these systems have just a green screen graphics. You got various modems, pages of printers. Well, now that are then it's just dot matrix and daisy wheel printers here. Don't see anything like laser or any chip quite yet. Maybe so if furniture because it's you know Radio Shack then was a catalog business. So the, you know a lot of the stuff wasn't in the store but you could order it. Uh, you got your floppies, you know, here we have we haven't gotten to the three and a half inch yet, so your options are five and a quarter or eight inch. Got books, specifically educational stuff, and this is interesting. You have a product here, a $1,200 piece of software. It's supposed to give you career guidance that's stamped product with drawing. So, if you're interested, know the story of that. More educational systems. They're really big on selling these network education systems where you have like a teacher computer and a bunch of terminals. And here you got the color computer too. This is 64K model. This is like what I have, uh, which is sort of like the peak color computer too. This is before the color computer three came out, so it's got 64K. They actually had uh, 64K. It was used in the OS9 disk operating system, so you could actually get a floppy drive for the color computer and a disk operating system, but I don't, there wasn't a whole as much software for that as it was on cassette cartridge. See, lower cost version, same computer but with only 16k of RAM. That would have been a little bit limiting, but it actually came, the original came as low as 4k. So they have like upgrade kits to upgrade from 4k to 16k. You have a touchpad like, like you'd have on your laptop, except as a separate item for your color computer. They have here a whole package for three forty nine. You have your sixteen k color computer, cassette recorder, thermal printer, and of course doesn't include the TV. You'd have to bring your own. Cassette drive was pretty common. I had one for my uh, MC ten. One computer that already was phased out when this catalog came out. One of these. This only had 4K of RAM, so you can kind of see that you know, the lowest end computers at that time were 4K and was already not enough RAM by 1985. You've got various accessories, joysticks, expansion systems. There you go. Software for the color computer. The only mention of the MC10, the computer I just showed you, is this little section here for software. And page of games for the color computer, and then finishes finishes out with the pocket computers, which were calculator-sized computers with keyboards that you could write basic programs in them, have like input and output, even a little printer, and they're portable computers, so it didn't issue laptops back then. You had 
saw earlier that luggable 4P, well this was actually a truly portable laptopish form factor and this is one that caught on and was sold and used for many years in different industries for portability was uh, paramount. Here you have sort of an expansion interface to turn it into a full desktop computer so you have your docking stations nowadays here's the great 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 grandpa of that for 800 bucks and that's pretty much it just kind of glossing through it didn't want to bone too much but you kind of get the general idea of where we were in 1985